The 3 d Fix Voodoo 3 has an output filter and you can change the behavior in the driver. 3D filter quality can be set to high or normal and alpha blending can be set to sharper or smoother. In this video we will find out what these settings do to the image quality. So we have a bunch of screenshots that we will compare. I also wanted to find out are there differences in performance and what happens if you leave these settings on automatic we will find out in this video. This is our test system. We have a slot one motherboard from AOPEN, a Pentium 3 running at 600 megahertz, 256 megabytes of SD RAM, and a Creative Labs Sound Cluster Live. And a 3D Fix Voodoo 3 3000. So let's take a look at the 3D filter first. We're switching back and forth. Bottom left of the screen, you can see the settings. We're switching between the 4x1 filter, which is the normal setting, and the 2x2 filter, which is the high setting. Now the 4x1 setting, the 4x1 filter is pretty much the same look that you're getting on a 3 dfx Voodoo 2. And if we look closer, you can see some sort of a horizontal artifact. Yeah, I uh, don't want to call it scan lines, but there's something going on with some horizontal lines. It doesn't show up at all colors. Uh, so it does depend a little bit on the scene, but it is fairly obvious. And it's obvious at all resolutions, not just at 640 by 480, even at 1024 by 768, you can see these lines on the screen. Using the 2x2 filter, these horizontal artifacts, they disappear. So in my opinion, uh, on the Voodoo 3, you are definitely better off changing the filter to 2x2 for a cleaner look without those horizontal lines. But what about performance? Here we have some results. I benchmarked incoming at 1024 by 768 and we can see that with the normal filter, we are getting faster output. So we've got 74.32 FPS at high and 76.32 FPS at normal. So if you want to beat some benchmarking records, make sure you go into the driver and set the 3D filter quality to normal. But my recommendation is setting it to high, you will get a better image quality. And in terms of performance, we're talking maybe two to 3% of performance loss compared to the normal filter. And now let's check out the alpha blending option between sharper and smoother. There are two issues that I found. The first one is banding. So here we have incoming and if you look at the sky and I will try my best to zoom in and show the differences, you can see that with the smoother filter, we can definitely see a lot of banding going on. So that filter seems to be quite aggressive with trying to smooth everything out. You also get an image that's a little bit softer and yeah, to some this is nice, but to others it's not. My personal preference is the sharper filter. It just looks better in most situations. The sharper filter, however, has one downside. Here we have a scene with some smoke and you can see there's some sort of a, a grid pattern or pixelation going on. And that's because textures are being overlaid and um, it's an artifact that you get in such situations. So that's one of the weaknesses with this filter, but still overall uh, assessing the image quality, I think you're better off setting the alpha blending setting to sharper. Okay, what about performance? Again, incoming, running at 1024 by 768 with the alpha blending filter toggling between sharper and smoother. And I could not measure a difference with the 3D Filter quality set to high, we're getting 74.32 versus 74.31. And with the 3D filter quality set to normal, 76.32 versus 76.32. So basically no difference. Setting the alpha blending between sharper and smoother, you're not gonna get a difference in performance. And finally, I wanted to find out if you set the driver to defaults, um, it uses automatic setting for those two filters. I was curious which settings does the driver actually engage. And what I found out is it depends on the resolution. So firstly, the alpha blending setting was set to sharpest at all resolutions. However, the 3D filter quality was set to high at resolutions up to 800 by 600. So if you play it at 640 by 480 or 800 by 600, you get the sharper filter. However, at 1024 by 768, 
and also at 1280 by 1024 the driver will switch the 3d filter quality to normal and you get those horizontal artifacts so i can only speculate because with the filter set to normal you do get higher performance so maybe 3d effects simply decided they needed more performance at 1024 by 768 or 1280 by 1024 to yeah look better in benchmarks in terms of visual quality even at those resolutions you can still see those horizontal artifacts um, but maybe they made a call with image quality maybe they uh, didn't see such a difference at high resolutions well the jury is still out you can draw your own conclusions i think you should go into the driver lock down those settings set the 3d filter quality to high and set alpha blending to sharpest uh, to sharper and you will get a really nice image on your voodoo 3. so guys there you have it that was a close look at the voodoo 3 output filter hopefully the screenshots and the footage is better than on the last video and I also wanted to answer some of the questions that you raised. So yeah, you've got my recommendation. Go into the driver, change it from automatic to the high 3D filter quality and also to the sharper alpha blending for the best image quality and also consistent look and consistent performance because the driver, if you leave it on automatic, it can change the settings depending on the resolution. Because of this output filter that the Voodoo 3 has, games that only support 16-bit colors will look nicer on a Voodoo 3. And I have another video planned for the future where we're going to do a uh, comparison between the NVIDIA TNT and the Voodoo 3, running a few games that only support 16-bit colors. But the next video has to do with retro storage and Wi-Fi. I will show you how you can use a wireless access point to connect your computer lab, your computer room to a Wi-Fi network, but then connect all the computers with Ethernet. And we also have a NAS, which will be uh, disconnected from the internet so that it can't be hacked or, and it's nice and safe. And we will share those folders on our retro LAN. So that's in the works. But yeah, let me know what is your opinion on the 16-bit output quality of the Voodoo 3. Which uh, driver settings do you recommend? Do you agree with my conclusion? Let me know. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you soon with another one.